consider the dazzling odds that out of the billions upon billions of possible combinations, there is a planet whose sole satellite is exactly 400 times smaller than its star and exactly 400 times closer. So that every time it passes between the two, it covers the face of the star perfectly, thrusting the planet into midday night, into something surreal and sublime. These are the words of one of my favorite bloggers, Maria Popova. She writes in The Marginalian. She continues, randomness seems too small a word for the staggering improbability that is a total solar eclipse. We may call it wonder. We may call it mystery. We may just fall silent before its brutal beauty, the way it presses consciousness against the gun barrel of time. This is what Rabbi Abraham Joshua Heschel called radical amazement. And for him, it was the spiritually highest plane, the level to which we should all aspire to attain, to walk through life ready to be amazed and delighted almost as a child would, but to cultivate that sense of wonder even as adults to cut through our cynicism or our readiness to explain amazingness away with reason or logic. Yes, we can explain these things. And yes, we can be radically amazed. So I'm driving the seven or so hours it will take me to get to upstate New York to try and experience totality, something I've never experienced before. Is there a blessing? in Jewish tradition upon seeing an eclipse? Well, in the imagination of the rabbis, as recorded in the Talmud, in Masachet Sukkot, an eclipse was actually a bad omen. It was a sign of war or of danger for the Jewish people. It feels about right. As I record this, the headlines all day have been about Iran on the brink of attacking Israel. The hostages have now spent 181 days in captivity. This war has taken its toll and continues to take its toll in so many awful, awful ways. So please, God, please let it end soon. And no, I do not think that the eclipse is some kind of harbinger of anything. I do not think that the eclipse has come to tell us anything about any of that. And yet there is something about that passage, that teaching that acknowledges that we are sometimes shaken to our core. Something about the extraordinary, an extraordinary natural phenomenon, like a total eclipse, that reminds us of our powerlessness. In Judaism, we say blessings. That is one main spiritual practice. And we do that to cultivate a sense of radical amazement, especially in the face of our powerlessness, to try and render even the most ordinary events holy. We are challenged by Jewish law to recite 100 blessings each and every day. It's a way of priming the pump for radical amazement so that we should go through and look for things, 100 things, experiences, people, places, to every single day to bless. So what blessing might we say over an eclipse? Well, those rabbis, some rabbis, would teach that we don't say a blessing at all because maybe there's something about bad luck, bad omens, but I'm actually in the other camp with plenty of other radically amazed rabbis that wants to be part of a community of people cultivating this sense of wonder. And so I'm going to say a blessing and I invite you to say it with me too. In that moment of experiencing the partial or the total eclipse, it goes like this. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam ose maase bereshit. It is the blessing that we say upon seeing other natural phenomenon, lightning and mountains, 
We say it upon seeing waterfalls, anything that amazes through nature. And it means, wow, creation is amazing. Thank you, God, for making all of this and for making me a part of it too. And who knows, maybe our collective wonder, maybe all of us radically amazed together, maybe all of us pausing to notice the really dazzling, wondrous possibility that our soul satellite should be passing in front of our star to radically amaze each of us. Maybe if we all stop and notice and wonder and offer up a blessing, then maybe God will hear our prayer. Maybe God will realize that we are ready to pay, pass, not just from light into darkness, but from darkness back into light. And maybe as that moon moves and the world becomes brighter, we will have found our way to making our world, our lives, our days brighter too, with our own sense of wonder and joy of being part of it all.